Here are the four answers. Great work if you found at least two of those. For the second one, you might have written as negative root 6 or negative 1 times root 6. Both are correct. For this third one, we can add the radicals together since the radicands are different. We do have the same index since we have a square root, but this radicand is a 2 and this one's a 3, so we leave this as is. Here's a little bit more work to make it more clear. We have 4 root 3 minus 2 root 3. So if I have 4 of these root 3s and I subtract 2 of these root 3s, I'm left with 2 of the root 3s. We see that if we factor out a root 3 from the first term and the second term. This would leave us with the quantity 4 minus 2 times root 3. We simplify the number in front of our radical sign to get 2. Now you don't need to show this step in your problem solving, but if it helps, then definitely do it. Whenever I add and subtract radicals, I just look at the numbers in front and then look at what I need to do with them. Should I add or subtract these? In this case, I subtract. So I just have 4 minus 2, which is 2 root 3. This last problem was just like one we've seen before. We want to make sure that we have a 1 in front of this cube root of 3. So we're really subtracting 9 minus 1, which equals 8. We want to make sure that we keep our root on the end, so we have 8 times the cube root of 3. I hope you're getting the hang of this.